Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today I will tell you about an action, thriller movie from 2020 titled Honest Thief. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Tom walks into the office at Aurora Self Storage. He looks around for the person on duty, and we are introduced to Annie, who playfully acts as if she is also a customer, before assisting Tom with his rental. Fast forward a year later, Tom and Annie are touring a beautiful property, while celebrating the one-year anniversary of their relationship. Tom surprises Annie by saying the house is actually for the two of them, thereby asking her to move in with him. The following day, Tom contacts the FBI, and is transferred to senior agent Baker. He tells Baker that he is the person whom the media refers to as, the in-and-out bandit, and that he wants to cut a deal, in exchange for turning himself in. The now infamous In-N-Out Bandit, is believed to be responsible for a string of bank robberies, which spans seven different states. In total, 12 banks were hit, for just over $9 million in cash. After noting that he hates the nickname, saying that it implies a certain level of carelessness, Tom outlines the proposed terms of his deal. In addition to turning himself in, Tom will return all $9 million in cash. In return, he's asking for a reduced sentence, no more than two years, in a minimum security prison near Boston. Now even more skeptical, Baker notes that in the year since the In-N-Out Bandit's last robbery, the FBI has received dozens of false confessions. Tom provides the information for the hotel he's staying at, and Baker says he will follow up in person. Two days go by, and Tom still hasn't heard from anyone. He calls again, this time getting Baker's partner, Agent Myers. Myers explains that something came up, but that the case was reassigned, and says Tom will be contacted soon. Shortly after, FBI agents Ramos, and Nivens, knock on the door. They sit down with Tom, mainly looking for a way to confirm that he's the perpetrator. Tom provides a detailed explanation, outlining the preparation, and execution, of the robberies. He reviews how he chose the locations, the methods of entry, even how he chose the day of the week. Despite that, they state that without any hard evidence, in other words, without the cash, there's no deal to be made. Tom then reveals that the cash is in a local storage unit, and gives them the unit number and the key. Ramos and Nivens then head off to investigate, leaving Tom behind. The agents arrive at the storage unit and quickly realize that Tom's story is authentic. They find box after box full of neatly bound currency. Nivens then reveals that he has a different plan. He tells Ramos he doesn't plan to turn the money in as evidence. He says now that they are in possession of the cash, no one will ever believe Tom's story. Ramos is hesitant to buy in, but his mind is changed after being reminded of his two children. As they finish loading their car and are preparing to leave, Annie stops by, curious as to why they're in Tom's storage unit. Nivens tells her that they're old friends of Tom's, and that Tom had asked them to help him move. Taking that as a sign that Tom bought the property, Annie happily returns to the office. Back at the hotel room, the final step of Niven's plan is revealed. He puts on a pair of leather gloves, and points his gun at Tom, however, Tom also had a contingency plan. He explains that the boxes they took contained only $3 million, and that the other six is housed elsewhere. Before Nivens can decide what to do, Agent Baker knocks on the door. Ramos lets him in, but Nivens still has his gun drawn. Nivens shoots Baker twice, before being tackled by Tom. They go through the glass together and fall to the sidewalk, where Annie was also just arriving. Tom hits Nivens with the butt of the gun, then flees the scene with Annie, driving away in her Jeep. Obviously shaken by what she just witnessed, Annie gets the full background from Tom. Tom had been an explosive specialist for the Marines. His mother unexpectedly passed away while he was deployed overseas, fighting a war he didn't believe in. As a result, Tom's father then fell into a state of depression, which affected his performance at work. Despite having 35 years on the job, Tom's father was fired. And to make matters worse, the company's CEO was caught embezzling money from the pension fund, leaving his father with no income. The first bank that Tom ever robbed, was that same CEO's. $9 million in total, he never spent a single dollar of it. And ever since he met Annie, he's never robbed a bank again. Fearing for her safety, Tom takes Annie to the bus station. Now that Tom is being blamed for Agent Baker's murder, the FBI will continue chasing him, until he can figure out a way to clear his name. Before boarding the bus, Annie remembers that the corrupt agents were on the storage facility's surveillance cameras, loading boxes into their car. The recordings are only saved for 48 hours, so she goes back to retrieve the memory card, before it writes over itself. 
Now aware that Annie and Tom have a relationship, Nivens has the same idea and finds her at the office. He locks the door behind them and interrogates Annie about the surveillance footage. Annie manages to stab him in the thigh with a pair of scissors, but Niven slams her, head first onto the counter. Hearing the struggle, Ramos comes in and stops Nivens from shooting her, but after checking Annie's condition he finds no pulse, and says that she's already dead. Soon after the agents leave the office, Tom arrives and rushes Annie to the hospital. Annie is admitted to the ER, and Tom leaves immediately after, hoping to avoid being spotted. Nevertheless, a police cruiser recognizes him at a stoplight, and a high-speed chase ensues. Nivens and Ramos hear the call on their police scanner, and they follow the broadcast to track Tom's vehicle, finding it parked in a residential area. Tom puts his van in reverse and backs full speed into their vehicle, immobilizing it. They then exchange fire, before Tom speeds away. Agent Myers spots the damaged van abandoned in an alley, and he tracks Tom into a nearby church courtyard, but Tom is waiting for him. Tom wrestles Myers' gun away from him, then informs him of the truth regarding his partner's murder. He explains that it was Nivens who shot Agent Baker, point blank, and that Nivens was also the one who attacked Annie. Still, Myers asks Tom to turn himself in, promising that they'll do things the right way, but Tom says it's too late for that. Tom tosses his gun to Myers, before departing, and Myers opens it up, realizing it was empty the entire time. The hospital then reports that Annie's condition has stabilized, causing a great deal of concern for Nivens and Ramos. As they sit in the hospital parking lot, Nivens tells Ramos that the onus is on him to find Annie and finish the job. He blames Ramos for declaring that Annie was dead while back at the storage office. Despite this, Ramos refuses, asserting that he's not going to kill an innocent person. Nivens curses him, then enters the hospital himself. He finds Annie sleeping in her room, however, just as he's about to enter he finds Agent Myers seated at her bedside. That night, Ramos is awake as his bed, unable to sleep. Noticing his restlessness, his wife says that whatever is bothering him, he should simply do what's right, and everything will be fine. He then hears a noise coming from the garage, and proceeds to check it out. There, Tom surprises Ramos, disarming him before asking for his help. Tom empathizes, saying that he knows it was Nivens who incited things, but that Ramos is now implicated. Ramos then reveals that he has the security footage from the storage unit. He recovered it from Annie, unbeknownst to Nivens. He goes on to tell Tom that Annie isn't safe at the hospital, that Nivens is still going after her. Tom takes Annie from the hospital, then stops for some supplies before moving her to a hotel. The following morning, he calls Nivens at home. Tom tells Nivens that he should run, before counting down from 10. Realizing what's going on, Nivens runs out the front door as Tom destroys his house. At Tom's request, Annie contacts Myers, and asks him to meet at the storage unit. She gives him the surveillance footage that Ramos had been in possession of, before unlocking an adjacent unit. Therein, Myers finds several columns of boxes, each full of cash. Meanwhile, Nivens calls Ramos, and asks him to meet at the safe house, where they stash the first batch of money. Tom follows Ramos in, at gunpoint, demanding that Nivens confess to shooting Baker. He also reveals that Ramos had taken the security footage from Annie, which enrages Nivens. Nivens punches Ramos and they begin fighting. Nivens then draws his backup firearm, and shoots Ramos multiple times, before pushing him towards Tom. In the exchange, Tom gets clipped by a stray bullet, forcing him to take cover behind the sofa. Finally, Nivens grabs the duffel bag full of cash, and escapes out the front door before speeding away. Frank makes his way to the table where he sits down and calls Nivens. He informs Nivens that there is a second bomb under the seat of his vehicle. The device is pressure sensitive, so not only can he not move from the seat, even moving the vehicle could potentially detonate the device. Nivens has no choice but to place the car in park, and wait for the bomb squad to arrive. The device is removed from the vehicle, and Nivens is promptly arrested. The explosive itself was a decoy, with no detonator whatsoever. Back at his office, Myers finds an envelope containing a digital recorder. The audio, which was recovered from Ramos, contains Nivens confessing to Baker's murder, amongst other crimes. As the movie ends, Tom walks towards Annie and Agent Myers with his hands up, thereby completing his original plan to turn himself in. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel to see more.